is where I want to use make you slow. A random selection of 28 heavy marijuana users spend an average of 38.28 minutes to complete a set of logic puzzles. Their standard deviation was 4.51 minutes. A random selection of 21 non-users spent an average of 25.4 minutes to complete the same set of logic puzzles. Their standard deviation was 3.98 minutes. Use a 0.01 significance level to test the claim that the population of heavy marijuana users takes longer on average to complete the set of problems than non-users. Do not assume equal variances. So let's identify this phrase here, test the claim in the problem. When you see that phrase, you know you're dealing with a hypothesis test. So at least we have an idea of what approach we should use, right? When we're doing a hypothesis test to compare the population of heavy marijuana users against the non-user population. And we're saying that they take longer on average. And they also tell us do not assume equal variances. So do not assume equal variances. That's important. We need to use that when we calculate our degrees of freedom. That's going to become very important in the problem. Okay, so let's start with a claim. We'll identify that first. So in order to identify the claim, we'll say the claim here is going to be comparing two means. So let's begin with that. We'll write two means down. And then we're going to use some notation. Now, they're talking about the claim that heavy marijuana users, so let's just use um, maybe M for marijuana, and then we'll use, for example, maybe N for non-users. So marijuana users, non-users, right? Okay, so we have the notation. Now we just have to put the right symbol in between them. It says heavy marijuana users take longer on average. So the mean time to complete the task is greater for marijuana users than it is for non-users. So greater than is the appropriate symbol since we're saying the mean time is longer than the non-users. All right, and then we're going to get HO and HA from there. So if the uh, hypothesis uh, claim, if it has a greater than symbol, a less than symbol, or not equal to, it's HA. So we're going to assume the claim is the same as HA here. And then for HO, we'll look at the opposite point of view, which would be the idea that marijuana users actually take less than or equal to the amount of time that non-users take to complete the puzzles. All right, then we're going to use, record the data. And in that step, we'll just use some labels here, M and N, non-users, marijuana users. And then we'll use n x bar s for each group, n x bar s for each group. And of course, we'll have a significance level or alpha here at the bottom. All right, so the n for the marijuana use group, it says that a random sample of 28 heavy users, so 28 heavy users of marijuana, spend an average of 38.28 minutes. 38.28. Complete a set of logic puzzles. Their standard deviation was 4.51 minutes. All right. Then for the other group, for the non-users, a random selection of 21, 29, sorry, non-users spent an average of 25.4. To complete the same set of logic puzzles, their standard deviation was 3.98. Right. And then it says use a 0 0.01 significance level. All right. So now that we have that all filled out, let's take that data that we have and plug it into our test stat formula. The sample sizes are small here, so we're going to go ahead and use a t test stat formula. And the structure of the formula is pretty similar to what we've used in the past. We're going to have x bar for the marijuana group minus x bar for the non-user group divided by the square root of. And we'll have the standard deviation for the first group squared over its sample size plus the standard deviation for the second group squared over its sample size. All right, now, basically we can plug in this information and calculate our test stat right away, right? So we have 38.28 minus 25.4 divided by the square root of 4.51 squared over the sample size of 28 plus the 3.98, 3.98 squared over its sample size of 29. Okay, so that's our full test stat formula all filled in. Let's go ahead and do the calculation for it with our calculator now. All right, so let's see. It's in parentheses on the top, 38.28 minus 25.4, close the parentheses, divide by the square root of 4.51 squared, divided by 28 plus 3.98 squared divided by 29. All right, and close up the parenthesis. 
hit enter, and we end up with a very large test stat, 11.42, 11.42. All right, so if we were working this problem out in the real world, we might at that point stop and just conclude that um, we have a significant result and we can reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis because this test stat is so large, it's off the charts, and we know that it's gonna fall into the rejection region. But of course, for our classroom exercise, it's important for us to be able to find the critical value and all that. So let's go ahead and do that step, even though it's not really necessary here because this test stat indicates that we're going to reject HO already. All right, but let's do the test stat procedure. What we want to do, of course, is to draw a bell curve. We're going to label the rejection region, which of course for this problem will be a right-tailed test. Why is it right-tailed? HA has a greater than symbol. That means we're dealing with a right-tailed hypothesis test, right? And of course, if it lands in here, we'll reject. So what we need to do is figure out the critical value here. We need to know what's the value that goes right here to separate the rejection region from the do not reject region. The problem is, is that you know, we know that it's going to be alpha all in one tail, so it'll be 0 0.01 for alpha, right? So we're going to look in the 0 0.01 column, but the question is, what are the degrees of freedom? In order to calculate the degrees of freedom, we have to use that very complicated formula that we had for when we deal with a scenario where we cannot assume equal variances. So this is important, this little piece of information. It means that we have to use this complicated approach to figure out what the degrees of freedom will be. So. We use this anytime the sample sizes are not equal to, and we are not assuming equal variances. So if we assume unequal variances and the sample sizes are not the same, we have to fill in this complicated fraction in order to calculate our degrees of freedom. It's a bit of work, but let's take the time to do it. First thing we want to do is come up with the A and B quantities, right? So let's figure out what the A and B quantities are. So the A quantity is going to be the variance over the sample size, so that's going to be 4 0.51 squared over 28 and for B it's going to be 3.98 squared over 29 and so then we'll give us our A and B values all right so let's figure out what those are so I'll have 4.51 squared divided by 28 that gives us this number 0.726 basically 0.726 dot 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 and then the b value so i'm going to store that value before we leave this calculation i'm going to store it as a so i have it in my calculator now the b value will be 3.98 squared divided by 29. okay and at that point we hit enter and that is going to be our b value so our alpha b okay so now we have that in our b value so it's point five, four, six, dot, dot, dot. The rest of it we can just plug into the calculator. We'll fill it all in right here in the calculator. And that'll give us our degrees of freedom. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use parentheses and I'll put in my A plus my B term. Close that up, square it, and then divide by a pretty complicated fraction. It's gonna be A squared divided by N1 minus one. So our N1 was 28, remember. So we're gonna divide by 27 plus our b squared, so I have it in my calculator stored as b, so b squared divided by, in this case, 28, because it would be 29 minus 1. Close up the parentheses, hit enter, and we get the answer 53.6. But remember, we have to truncate that, so we're just going to use 53. We we'll just drop the decimal off, and our degrees of freedom for the problem will be 53. All right, so let's go to our table now and find what the critical value is when alpha is 0.01 and degrees of freedom is 53. Okay, so we're looking at 0.01 and 53 degrees of freedom. Okay, so that's between 50 and 55. Since this value is a larger critical value, we're going to choose that value because it's more conservative. That's 2.403 then. Okay, so we found our answer for our critical value to be 2.403. As we said before, this test stat of 11.42 is way to the right here. So we're definitely going to be in the reject HO area, right? So we're definitely in the reject HO area. So our initial conclusion is to reject the null hypothesis. And that means we should support the alternative hypothesis, HA. Now, we have to look back at our claim and ask which one was it? Was it HO or was it HA? It turns out the claim in this case is HA, so we'll be wording our answer to say that we should support HA. So the sample data will support the claim is how we should say it, right? So the sample data, the sample data support the claim.
and dot 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 fill in the claim. And the claim, of course, here is that um, the mean time it takes marijuana users is actually longer than the mean times it takes non-users to complete the logic puzzles. And of course, that supports the idea that perhaps um, something about marijuana usage could slow down their ability to think quickly. Um, however, of course, you know there might be something wrong with the overall design of the study. So. Um, but at least based on the way the study was set up, and assuming that set up, study set up was valid, then of course we'd be concluding that marijuana users seem to take longer than non-users to complete the logic games.